could also throw the deep ball. One of the greatest games he ever had was the day after Thanksgiving in 1994. That helped lock up that Southwest Conference Championship. Max bombed Texas Tech out of the stadium. He, Jimmy Oliver, there was another wide receiver named Chris Brassfield. He also had a tight end who was pretty good. His name was Brian Collins. Mm -hmm. Collins is here tonight, and he told me a great story. Okay. He said, you know, we used to call Max the golden child. And I asked Ryan Tucker, offensive tackle, he said the same thing. He said, guy looked like he's right off the beach. He was good looking, <laughs> but he could play. And Brian Collins said, we're playing SMU, and it's a dog fight, and I've got the stomach flu. And in the huddle, I stand right next to Max. And he notices that I'm not feeling real well. I'm not doing good. He said, what's wrong? He goes, I feel like I'm going to throw up. He goes, well, I'm with you, brother. Just hang in there. Keep playing. Every play. You doing okay, BC? Yeah. Well, you going to throw up? No. Well, let me, let me know. I'm with you, brother. Okay. Well, Brian finally figured out pretty quick that Max wanted to know if he was going to throw up so Max could get out of the way. <laughs> he said... Brian said it wasn't all about me. He thought, I, he thought he was caring for a little bit, but he wanted to make sure he was out of the line of fire. Max had a terrific career here at TCU, was in the Dallas Cowboys camp as well, and still has the best hair in the business. Max Naki, the quarterback. <laughs> Some things that I still had a record in. I mean, 57 passes in one game without interception. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, so, this is going to sound cheesy. My wife is going to, she's going to roll her eyes, but uh, there's, I have a Max Naki adage, okay? And the adage is, I learned a lot more throwing interceptions than I did throwing touchdowns. And in 1993, I learned a lot. <laughs> but in all seriousness, that's what sports does, and that's what sports did for me, and I'm sure that's what sports has done for these people, is giving you an opportunity to lay it all on the line, okay? Because you prepare and you work hard, you lay it all on the line, you win some, you lose some, but ultimately you learn. And that's helped me throughout my life with everything that I've done. And I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've learned a lot from them. Um, so I was fortunate to do that. But, but in order for me to get to this point and, and be up here with this group of people, there were so many people that were instrumental in helping me get there. And I'm going to walk you through that now. And I'm going to thank all those people. So I'm going to start. Uh, I, I started out playing football in the second grade in the south side of Chicago. And first I want to recognize and thank my, my mom and my dad. My mom and my dad, they were the type of people that it wasn't about participation trophies. It was about doing everything that you can and learning it for yourself. And when you fall down, you pick yourself up and you go back in and you, and you compete. So thank you, mom and dad. Um, then we moved to Texas. So I moved to Texas in the seventh grade, and uh, my nickname was Yankee. <laughs> Yankee. We, we moved to McKinney, so it was Yankee. Um, but I remember Coach Murph, my uh, junior high coach, asking me, uh, son, what position do you play? And, and I remember looking around, and, and the saying, everything is bigger in Texas, is absolutely true because I looked at all these guys that I was playing football with and I said quarterback <laughs> um, next uh, going into high school um, he couldn't be here tonight but uh, his, 
his team is probably hanging 60 or 70 on, on whoever they're playing, but Todd Dodge was my high school quarterback coach. Probably one of the greatest quarterback coaches ever in Texas high school football history. He is probably one of the biggest reasons of my success. Um, he had me up every day at 6 a.m. working out and coaching me, teaching me this, this game. Uh, so, Todd, thank you. Um, you know, we all have a person or two or three that we think is legendary. And uh, one of those two or three was a guy or a coach of mine. His name is Coach Ron Poe. And he was McKinney High School's head football coach. And I'll never forget meeting him. He was, you know, 10 feet tall, 3 feet wide, the greatest man ever. And whenever I'm faced with a with a decision, so with my family, with my work, I always put everything to what I call that the Coach Poe test. What would Coach Poe do in this situation? And so, thank you, Coach Poe, for giving me that, because that's really special to me, and I always, I always think about you. Um, in high school, uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of these people and a lot of you sitting in the audience went through a, a recruiting process, and uh, there, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of interest with a lot of schools, and um, Coach Hodges, who's here tonight, he, he helped me through this. Coach Hodges was not only a great coach and a great teacher for me, but he was basically my therapist. <laughs> so anything that I couldn't tell my parents, my girlfriend, or any of my friends, I came to Coach Hodges. He put it into perspective for me, and uh, he kept me on a, on a clear path to, to getting to where I am now. So thank you, Coach Hodges. Um, and then I want to talk about my, uh, my stepdad, Dan Spears. Dan passed away about two years ago of uh, brain cancer. And uh, Dan, for those of you who know him, was just an unbelievable man. And uh, he was my second father. And every time I wanted to go out and throw the football, he was there. He threw the football with me every day if I wanted to. So uh, Dan's an interesting guy. You know, he, uh, he used to tell me when I would mouth off, he would say, look, I mean, if you don't have practice or you don't have a game, you don't need a car. So, and we lived out in the country, so that was, uh, you know, that was the law with Dan. So thank you, Dan. Um, now to TCU. So during the recruiting process, uh, TCU really wasn't on, on, on the radar. Um, back then, you know, we're in the Southwest Conference and you've got Texas, Texas A&M, got Texas Tech and then you know I went and visited a couple other schools but when I came to Fort Worth and I met Coach Sullivan and what you know they showed me the town I, I fell in love and, and I knew this is the place that I needed to be and the values of this city and, and everything about it are extremely special in my opinion um, so there were some instrumental people in that uh, Coach Windig uh, Chancellor Tucker, Pat Sullivan, uh, Jack Hesselbrock, uh, Ross Bailey, uh, they all were extremely instrumental and, and, and thank you for being instrumental and, and, and helping me to understand what a great place this was. Um, and while I was here, I had the opportunity to play with, we, look, I mean, pulling together a, a conference championship in the Southwest Conference, I mean, that's special. A lot of things have to work out in order for that to happen. I mean, so I want to thank, I've, there's a lot of guys here, Boyd Milby, Brandon Hickman, Mark Cortez, Todd Stanford, Brian Collins, um, uh, and if I'm missing anyone, I don't think I am, but uh, as, as Brian, said, you know, Jimmy Oliver, Chris Brassfield, uh, Coy Woods, Andre Davis, Barrett Robbins, Ryan Tucker. I mean, these guys, we went and we played hard and we laid it on the field and we succeeded. And I'm extremely proud of that and I'll never forget it. So thank you. Um, while I was at TCU, I was fortunate enough to meet my wife, uh, Monica. 
she, I met her at a, at a mixer, and uh, when I met her, I knew that she was, she was the one that I wanted to be with for the rest of my life. Now she, you know, she, she grew up much quicker than I did, uh, believe it or not. But uh, she finally had me back. We now have two wonderful children. We have a great life together. So Monica, thank you, and I love you. Uh, last, uh, I want to thank the Letterman's Association. Um, thank you to all of all, all the Lettermen that, that elected me and nominated me and, and, and made this all happen. Uh, and Greg Blackwell, thank you so much for putting this together. I mean, I called Greg today, and uh, he did a fantastic job putting all this together. So, thank you. <laughs>